granting access to certain users to certain parts of a Next.js application can be a little bit tricky, especially if you're using the app router. And in today's video, I'm going to be building a custom authentication in a Next.js app using the app router and a database. And some context on this video, I'm working on a side project, if you haven't seen all my other videos, basically creating a, an application for meal prepping. If you want to know what the app is about, you can watch my other videos where I go into it. But in this video, I'm going to implement two types of users. One user is going to be an admin where they can manage, like edit and delete ingredients. And the other one is just a normal user that can only view ingredients. And in order to achieve that, I need to set up a role-based access into my app. And I decided I'm going to build my own custom authentication. So in this video, I'm not going to use any libraries for the authentication, even though in hindsight, I should have. And I would recommend using a custom library for authentication. But I didn't this video. I just wanted to better understand the authentication process. And if that's your goal too, then this video should hopefully help you. Now, role-based access in theory is simple. We have users, we have roles, and we attach these roles to users and each of the roles has multiple permissions. These permissions is what allows the user to do certain stuff in the app. For example, create an ingredient or edit an ingredient. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to have a manage ingredients permission, which groups all the manage permissions for the ingredients and then have a view only permission for all the other users. Um, I'm still working on my app and it's very simple, very rudimentary at the moment. And I've already set up all this, so I'm just gonna go over it now and explain all the stuff that I've implemented and how it works and why I've done it in the way I have. I have a mixture of client components and server components, which was a bit challenging for me because I haven't done much in Next.js, especially with the app router. So, so trying to authenticate the user, create a session, all of that was a bit challenging using server components, but I'm gonna explain all of that. So my database looks something like this. I have a user and they have an email, password, an ID, a name, whatever. Then I have roles and each of the roles has a name. And then I have user roles and these are the roles attached to a user. And basically I went with a separate table for this because I want users to have multiple roles, essentially. Then we have permission, which is basically an ID and a name, and this will be like manage ingredients or view ingredients and stuff like that. Then I have another table for role permissions because this is also another many-to-many -many relationship. I would probably assign a certain permission to multiple roles and a, one role can have multiple permissions. And then the last thing is I have a session, which is going to store all of my sessions for the logged in users. Like I said, maybe the best way is to use a third party app or a library for this but I went the route of doing custom authentication for my app. So here we are. The session has an ID, the user ID and expires at. Now, ideally these should be deleted from the database automatically or whenever we verify the session and they, we realize it has expired, then it needs to be deleted, but I didn't actually implement that yet. Right, on to the other important stuff. So as you can imagine, like with every app, we need to wait for the user to sign up, need to wait for the user to log in. This is my very simple sign up form. I only have, I only have a name, the email and password. I already have a user, but just to explain. Now, what this will do is, it's gonna create the user in the database going to create a session for that user and navigate the user to the list of all ingredients. And at the moment, this user doesn't have any roles, so they won't be able to edit an ingredient, for example, because they don't have any roles assigned yet. I'm going to log out and log in as the admin user. We have the same table, but now we have an edit button here. And if I click it, I will be able to edit the ingredient. And there we go. Now, to explain how the login and the sign up works. If you go to the login page, this is just the form, I'm not gonna bother with any of that. The This is a form with an action and the action is a Next.js action. 
which is basically a login action. And what this does is gets the data from the form, tries to find the user from the database. If it doesn't find the user, then it shows an error, tries to get the password and the passwords are hashed in database. So compare password will compare the hash from the input password with the hash in the database. And if it doesn't match, it's gonna show another error. And then it's gonna create a session for the user and redirect the user to ingredients hall. A great session does a few things. It, it generates an expires ad, which will last for seven days. So this is the how long the session will last. It will create the session in the database with the same expires ad. Then it's going to encrypt the session and add it as a cookie to the user's browser. So this way, whenever the user tries to log in, I'm going to check the cookie first and verify the session and get the same session from the database to make sure that the user actually exists and the session is valid. So this is the create session, which happens when the user signs up or logs in i'm gonna go to the sign up so this is the sign up action which works the same way as the login when the form is submitted it goes here and we have the form data it gets all the details from the form and then we have validation on the form here and hashes the password like i said the password is not saved as the string that the user inputs it's a hash password the reason for this is it adds a little bit more security on your password. So if your database gets leaked, they're not going to have the actual strings for the user's passwords in there. Now, obviously there, they, there is a way to brute force this like with any password, but yeah, just adds that little bit extra security and the sign up then creates the user in database which will provide with the user ID, creates a session with that user ID, redirects the user to ingredients slash all. Cool, so these work pretty much in a very similar way. The only difference is the sign up actually creates the user in database. Now for all my other actions here, like get ingredients and create ingredients and whatever, I do have a verify session. What this will do is it will get the cookie the session cookie and if there it was going to try to decrypt it if, if there's no session if there's no cookie with the session then the user is not authenticated and we'll deal with that in any way we want to we can redirect the user to login or whatever if the session exists it's going to try to find that in the database so just to match that the user has actually logged in and we have a record of that in our database now i have a big query here basically trying to connect all of my data so i can get the permissions of that user some logic for that here as well and then this is my session payload this is what i returned and i can use this in other places the reason i want the permissions here is so in any place that i actually need to use the user's permission i can just get the session and get the permissions for that user and i'll show you why i need that and where that's very useful my, my app doesn't have too many pages at the moment but i use the logic of the user and the verify user in some places for example in the header i also the other thing i didn't do for my app is ideally you would want the user object somewhere in a context wrapped in the full app basically at a wrap the app in a user context or authentication context or whatever and that way you can access the user details from anywhere from the app without making the request to database and getting the user. Now, obviously you want to authenticate the user multiple times. The session will expire at some point and we need that check pretty much, I will say on every request. So here I have in the header, I have basically some links and I have a some logic here that checks if the user is logged in and shows different menu items like login is not going to be shown for logged in users. So I still use the verify session and I'm using a use state here basically to store the session in state. Again, this is not the best way. Um, probably best to have a context and get the session from the context. Yeah, just for this example, I went with this. I'm calling that verify session action and setting the state with the session. This will have the permissions here and the, if the user is authenticated. 
And then I use that. If the user is authenticated, then show the ingredients menu item. Or if it's the user is logged in, then show the logout button. If the user is logged out, then show the login button. And then I have a sign up as well, which shows when the user is logged out. Now for the more juicy kind of logic it, where we have permission checks. Like I showed here, we have actions for the ingredients in the ingredients table. And if I click, this will not show for users. They cannot manage ingredients. This is, I'm using Tanstack React table here to show the data in my table. And I'm passing a meta here, which is basically the user permissions. And I'm doing the same thing here. I have a use effect with the, calling the verify session action. The reason I'm using a use state here is the verify session uses the cookies from the package next headers. You can only use this package on a server component. And you can see use server here on most of my actions, but you can't call this from a client component. And if it's not in a use state and if it's not used as an action, then you'll get an error. Basically, I've been fighting with this error for a while. But the only way you can have this is either have an API that uses the function or if you don't like to have an API, then use the action calling it from a client component, but use it in a use state and then store the session. So here I'm doing the same thing, storing the session state again for the 10th time. Best way to do this is to have a context to have and store the session in there, but yeah. And then I'm passing the, the user's permission in the tables meta and this is basically a way to pass any data you want to your columns and here I'm using that if the user has the manage ingredients permission then show the edit button if it doesn't have the permission it's not gonna add this button in there when everything's set up like this it's very easy to just add this check wherever you need to and another example is on the edit page so Whenever this page loads, it's going to get the user session and then I'm checking if the user is logged in. If it's not, then redirecting the user to the login page. And then I also am checking if the user has permission to manage ingredients. If they don't have permission, then I'm going to show not authorized here. Now, let's see how this looks. I don't have any loading states on my pages, but it did redirect my user to the login page. It will basically try to authenticate the user, sees that the user is not logged in and goes back here. Now I'm going to log in with the user that has permission to edit and we can see that it formed here and that all works. Let's log out. I think I have a normal user. And now this user doesn't have the manage ingredients permission. And if I try to go to that page, I see that the user is logged in, but they don't have the right permission. So I'm just showing unauthorized here. And that's 